You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We have a special guest in the building. And this is really a special guest. Envy says special guest for everybody, but this really is a special guest. Ava DuVernay. Queen Ava DuVernay. Is hey, How y'all doing? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? How's everything? Now, we see you had a lot of people, but it's okay. because No, I know. I walked rapper. in here like a... I know. I walked in here like, you know, I'm about to do a concert tomorrow. <laughs> no, <you're, laughs> we heard you're a rapper, so you have a posse with you. So, I, I, that, yeah, so okay. it's understood. Yes, yes. <laughs> we have to right. make sure She's not in here to threaten us. Nobody said anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to walk out in the middle and just, <laughs> you know. Now, now you well, got Wrinkle in Time coming out Friday. Yeah, Friday. We, we in this moment, this uh, black renaissance in TV and film. What does is, what is Wrinkle fit into all of that? You know, Wrinkle is 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 um, a, a big part of it. Like, I was just out in L.A. with, ah, just beautiful right now. Lena Waithe and Issa and Ryan Coogler and... Um, Angela Bassett and uh, and I mean you look at all the shows Underground and um, uh, Queen, Sugar. Uh, Queen Sugar and Insecure and Lena's show and, and Shy yep. the Shy and uh, Mara Barker Kill's got a new show coming out uh, called Love Is which is really cool and is this film as well and television Barry Jenkins has another film coming out Steve McQueen has another film coming out he did Twelve Years a Slave mm -hmm. um, but the bottom line is you can count all those people in two hands. You know, mm -hmm. and so while we are um, kind of in a moment where we can all see each other, there needs to be a lot more. And you know, it really, when you talk about Brown, you're not seeing you know uh, enough attention paid to Latino creators, uh, you know, Asian creators. You ain't never seen no Native uh, American, American people. Creator. You know, what do, what do they see on TV? Nothing. So mm -hmm. I, I, that's part of this film is trying to show as many people as possible because we think we. Aren't seeing those representations, but imagine, imagine everyone else. There's just a lot more to do. Now let's go back. Yeah, How did you get into do. directing in films? What um, was your start? I uh, I was I was a, I didn't pick up a camera until I was 32, mm. uh, which is really old in director years. Unless like you know you're gifted years. though. Well, um, I didn't go to film school, so it was uh, really uh, improbable that I would ever have made it. See, Ryan Coogler, who's a great friend of mine who directed Black Panther, is 31. He's on his third film. Right. I didn't pick up a camera till I was 32. And what gave See, you, what gave you that to pick up a camera? Uh I, I was just I was just trying it out, just playing with it. I was on these sets. I was a publicist, so I was a publicist for other filmmakers and I would be on the sets, never with a woman, never with a black person. Mm -hmm. And I uh, was watching people direct, and like I can do that. I feel mm. like I can do it. Um I never thought it would be uh, living from it. I just picked up a camera to enjoy it for myself, mm -hmm. see what I can make. And I just Kept making things. You know what I think things. is great? Even your background doing PR yeah. and uh, being on sets and everything, that's just helpful for when you did decide to do it because yeah. Yeah. having that skill to be able to do PR for someone else's movie, imagine trying to do that for yourself. Yeah, And yeah. having those connections already in place too, it kind of all fits together. Yeah, I, look, uh, I didn't make as many connections, but what I did was I was watching them. Mm -hmm. That's why I tell people, if you can't go to film school or you can't afford it or you, you're older and you don't want to go back, just get yourself on a get set on so set. you can observe because right. that's really, you know, film school, I was able to stand close to directors. Um, uh, I didn't go to film school, but I was able to stand close to directors on sets and watch what they did right and wrong. Mm -hmm. Most of what I learned was what I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yelling at people, right. being unorganized, you know. So it was a good school, but it was just a different route. Your story is interesting, though, because like a lot of people always come in here and they be like, I knew I always wanted to be a director. Oh, right. But you right. did PR, you did journalism, yeah, you ran yeah. a blog, were any of those things your passion? I never thought that I could be a director. I didn't even know, uh, first of all, that ladies could be a director. I mean, really, in my mind, I didn't mm -hmm. see anybody doing it at that time. Now I know there were amazing black women filmmakers doing it, but at the time, only black director I feel like I knew it was Spike Lee and John Singleton. Mm -hmm. And they just felt super, you know, they're, they're guys. So it wasn't something that as a little girl I looked up to. So that's why when I have the Barbie in my likeness with the yeah. director's chair, or now black black girls like and brown girls know directing is a possibility, Absolutely. right? They see Patty Jenkins and do Wonder Woman, they see it. So, you know, I believe in if you see it, you can be it. Yeah, because it's yeah. interesting to be the first for a lot for yourself. You know, the first woman to direct a but a film with a budget over one hundred million dollars, the first yeah. black woman to do something like that. It feels like why is it two thousand eighteen? I know. I know people say those things like like it's a source of pride. I know it's a source of pride for some people, but for me it's like 
for the industry, like, aren't y'all embarrassed mm -hmm. that it's 2018? Like, they'll say it when I walk out on the stage, and it's like, you might want to keep that on the low, that it's <laughs> 2018 and this is just now happening. Um, so, yeah, it's a bittersweet thing when I hear it. Because I know I know it wasn't wasn't any of my doing. It's only because the industry decided to pay attention to somebody right now, and I started. I, I happen to be here. There's amazing black women filmmakers been doing this forever. Mm -hmm. But people um, really, people really love you. I, I was on a, a flight with you coming from uh, New Orleans, and um, I at you the was top, in first class. He was in. Why class. didn't you say hello? No, we were all in first class. I, I this was a couple of years ago, and I didn't know who you were. And, okay, well that's why. No, no, <laughs> I, 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 like, I why is everyone talking to her? <laughs> but everybody kept coming up to you, and they kept complimenting to you, com complimenting you. You're so nice. This, that, and the Amari was on the flight. Uh, it was a bunch of actors, A level, B level, C levels. And everybody was just Levels. walking by saying how nice it was to work with you. Yeah. And I was like thinking to myself, I was like, I know who that is, but I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure. Like, and what you, does she do? I, I, she, didn't know, I was, she, didn't, she clearly didn't know no, Evie so, either. As soon as I, no, she didn't. She didn't know who I was either. But as soon as I got off the flight, I Googled you and I started looking into some of your movies. But it wasn't your movies. It was everybody on that flight was just so complimentary about who you were and how you were such a pleasure to work with. And you don't usually get that from everybody. And I was just a fly on the wall just listening. Mm. And I was like, that's pretty dope. She must be an amazing person. That's nice how to you, hear. Thank yeah. you for that. Uh, piggybacking off him, how do you feel about being a, a celebrity director? Because you're a director, but you're also a star. Like, you won Entertainer of the Year at the NAACP that Awards. Was nuts. Like, that doesn't happen for every director. So how do you feel about the fame side of it? I, don't, I think it's a new, a new piece of it. Uh, maybe I just feel maybe the last year, actually, where, um, and so it's different, but, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know. You yeah. made some incredible things it's, happen. The fact that you got Sade to do that incredible song, I know. Sade of all people. Oh, you want to tell you how it happened? Please. Okay. So Disney said, who would you like to do the song? And this is before I'd even, you know, shot any of it. And I said, well, you're not going to be able to get who I want. And mm -hmm. they were like, well, who? I said, Sade. And they're like, yeah, we probably won't. <laughs> um, but we can get you an address. We can get a letter to her through the manager, to the, to the direct, like, country home in London address. An old was, school letter? Old school handwritten letter. <laughs> Not even an email? No. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so I wrote, the, I did an email too, but I also sent an actual letter. I I think she got the email because, anyway, I put three days into this email and first I sounded like, oh my gosh, I love you, you're the soundtrack of my life. Then I said, oh, let me be cool. I've got a film, you know. <laughs> like, I was rewriting it like nine times. It's Sade. So anyway, I sent her the letter and literally within 24 hours she called me. She knew who you were. She knew who I was, and she called me, and it was her voice saying human words on the phone into my actual ear. What did she mm. say? Her speaking voice. It sounds like her singing voice. It was her. It was smoky and husky, and she was so sweet. Wow. And she was beautiful, and she called me a queen, and she said she loved Selma, and she really cared about the script and the movie, and she wanted to make uh, the story about this girl and that she would do it. I'm going to wow. be honest. If, uh, what? What? If wow. I already threw my, 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 my shot at Oprah and she became my best friend, I would feel like I could be friends with anybody. <laughs> you could do anything in the world. Like, Shade should have been light work. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was lucky. I was lucky, yeah. So we had a really, really nice um, collaboration. She wrote the song before we even shot the movie. Mm -hmm. So we p put her lyrics of, from the song into the dialogue of the mm -hmm. characters, mm -hmm. which is kind of like the backwards way to do it. Usually the song comes at the very, very end. Mm -hmm. So anyway, she was great to work with and we've kept in great touch. She, I had a cold and she sent me like, herbs and fruits and berries mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. you know she, i think she's very yeah i mean that's why you look that way because you're like don't put crap in your body so anyway she's, now, she's sweet now you were initially supposed to be the director for black panther yeah they asked me they asked me to consider making it um i don't know maybe three years ago and why, why didn't you because i wanted to make a story about a girl got you um i really wanted to 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 make something that was girl focused because mm -hmm. i just come off selma mm -hmm. and 13th Felt like they were masculine. A lot of testosterone. Masculine yeah. and yeah, and so uh, so yeah, I wanted to make something that was more woman focused. And, and so I did you, love you, the women in Black Panther also. Though. Yeah, he that did a was great like job with it. We we direct we uh, edited our films right across the hall from each other. Oh, that's nice. So I saw him. So you peeked over a couple times. He peeked in on you a couple yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. We 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 would take walks around a lot and just take a breather. And I've known him for a long time, and uh, he's just a really good friend of mine. You, so. threw, you threw the alley to Ryan though. Like you you were, you were the one who recommended Ryan for Black Panther, right? Um, I don't know if I recommended him. Um, it was like a really short list because when you look at that space, like coming off of Creed, you know, the, the the studios are looking at who's made films that you know that have been successful that you could tell they can handle the next film at the next uh, budget level. And so, I mean, it's it's a pretty short list because there's not a lot of us making films. Mm. I mean, like I said, on two hands. So, mm. 
So yeah, no, he was just coming off of Creed at that time. And I don't know, it was just a perfect, perfect film for him. I really felt like a black man should have made that film. I felt strongly that that film needed to be made by a brother because it, that was the central focus of it. So, um, so it happened and it was fantastic. That's what I love about you. Like you're so unapologetically black. You're so unapologetically woman. Like you'll go in these rooms and say, no, this need to be a black woman directing. This need to be a black guy mm -hmm. directing. Do, mm -hmm. do they ever get mad at you? Do they ever call you biased or anything? Mm, I mean, maybe behind my back, but gotcha. you know, mm -hmm. not, not, to, not to my face, you know. How did so. A Wrinkle in Time come across your desk? Oh gosh, it was it was really lovely because they called me, and a lot of times in Hollywood they want you to come in, kind of mm -hmm. pitching and begging and asking. That's the way that it's kind of set up. Um, and this one was I was invited and welcomed into something that they wanted to do. So there's a brother over there, Tendo Nagenda, and he called me and said, "Look at the script," and uh, I'd never read the book. Uh, and he said, "Imagine the worlds that you can build." I was like, "Worlds." He's like, yeah, this girl hops planets. I was like, hops planets? How? He was like, Ava, read it, read it. I was reading it. And I was just like, this is dope. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a, it's a young black girl. It was a young girl. We made her black, um, but a young girl who hops planets and fights the darkness and flies and saves the universe. And she's not a superhero. She's not a Jedi. She's just a, a girl. I'm excited about this. I have three young daughters. Well, one How is, old are they? I have a 16-year-old okay. and a four-year-old. The one-year-old can't oh, wow. The one year old can't go, but the four-year-old is 16. I'm going to take them this week, and I'm, we're, we're excited about it. I tell everybody, it's the perfect daddy-daughter date. It is. I flew to L.A. to go to the premiere mm -hmm. so my daughter could see it oh. and meet Ava, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes. But it was great. Yeah. Yeah, it's good Good for good because it's a whole thing. It's about a father-daughter. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's what I keep asking my daughter. Are you, well, I don't want to give the movie away. Are you, were you nervous go, about the Will you come and look for me? Yes. Would you will come, you come and look, look for me? me? That's yes, what exactly, everybody say. Exactly. Well, everybody knows the story is about this father. It's really this absentee father. That's one of the reasons why, you know, to, to be honest with you. In, Not a black absentee father. Exactly. Either, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, that's why. Yeah. That's why I did it that way. Okay. Right? And so, um, and so, yeah. So he's gone, and she's got to go look for him, but he's out in the universe, so she got to go, go from him. planet to planet to find him. So all the dads are like, would you come look for would me? Would you come look for me? Oh, what did your daughter like say? Absolutely. She's like, first of all, you would never leave. That's yes. what she kept saying. I'm good. like, I'm glad you know that. See? You know that's that. That's good. That's good. Now, with the budget of $100 million, did you ever get nervous with that much over your head at all? No, because it's like, um, in L.A., we have uh, 99 cent stores. Do you all have that? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Are you going to have that? Family dollar, dollar general. Dollar, yeah, dollar, yeah, family dollar, yeah, dollar general, dollar, all yeah. those. Yep, yep. And so I love, that's one of my favorite places to go, like, Literally to this day, if you go into that dollar store, it's so like, much fun. My thing, and so um, it's like going into the dollar store, well, not with a dollar, but like with a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing wrong. You spend in, you enjoy yourself. You have an idea for something, you you can make it happen. And um, so it wasn't any kind of pressure or any kind of problem in the studio. Um, wanted to make a film for that amount, and I was happy to make it for, yeah, them for that amount. <laughs> yeah, I could do that for you. <laughs> what, what, yeah, do, yeah. what do you prefer, big budget or small budget? You know what? At the end of the day, it's it's not different when you're running out of hours and the sun is going down and you still don't have your shot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's just or the actors just not connecting with it or or, um, you know, at the end of the day, all of the bells and whistles around it don't make a difference to what actually is happening between the actors in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. So I like that I can do both. Um, but I really I, I feel like I like uh, the mid range films mm -hmm. like on summer. We had no money. About twenty million dollars. That ain't no money. Yeah, not for a huge. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, no, it's no not. Money. Twenty million dollars is twenty million dollars. That was a period piece, so everybody had to be in period dress and costumes. You were doing beatings, marches, riots, all that stuff. Um, twenty million dollars is the same amount of money they make like small romantic comedies with, where just folks just sitting in rooms talking. Got you. And we were trying to do all this scale with it, so it's not. It's not a lot. Um, I remember one time, like on the on the big on the big uh, scene where they have the assault on the bridge. Mm -hmm. In real life, there were like 57 horses. And on the day I showed up, they were like, yeah, we have seven horses. Oh, I was nice. like, hmm, uh, how, how, did this how did this happen? They were like, yeah, we don't have any money. Horses cost that much? Yeah, horses cost a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seven horses. And then I'm sure there's union fees and everything. And you got to have a trainer. Somebody mm -hmm. got to do, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's so In Alabama? They got union Well, what do they just let yeah. the horses run free, Charlamagne? Oh. Just let them... No, wild horses. Why you saying Alabama? Sorry, Alabama. He doesn't. He didn't mean. Well, I'm from South Carolina, so yeah. you know, seeing a horse run by ain't too out of the norm. 
<laughs> right, 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 right. Now, I see Quest Love is doing the wrinkle challenge. The wrinkle he time is. Challenge. He's so that's What's so that? wonderful. <laughs> well, it's basically what you did on your own. Oh, the screening. Uh, yeah, he's okay. a, there's a thing called Give a Child the Universe, where this organization, Color of Change, I saw that is uh, is matching tickets to kids who don't have enough money to see the movie. Mm. So you can go in and buy a ticket for a kid, and then they'll match it to kids. I mean, it's in Flint, Ferguson, Oakland, Compton, like all over teachers who want to take their classes but don't have the money to do it. Are, are you so. feeling any pressure because Black Panther made so much money? Do you think Disney's looking at you like, okay, well, you're the queen? No, you know, we, we, because we, we, that's a, it's a Marvel superhero movie. Absolutely. This is a kid's movie. That's the thing. This is a kid's movie like for 8 to 14 year olds. Yes. True. You've seen it. It's mm -hmm. for the little ones. It's for young people. So that's very different than the Dora Milaje, you know, sexually coming out with their spears to save them. You know what I <laughs> right, mean? Right, like, right, right. this is about a little girl who just wants to find her daddy. And um, and so, no, no, it's a different thing. I mean, Black Panther costs twice as much as ours and um, and it's a different kind of thing. Yeah, I think Black Panther was a cultural moment. This is more yeah. of a family moment. Yeah, it's a family for kids and families. And it's, you know, something that we just want to be a classic that's just around for a long time. People may not even catch up to it at the theaters. It's one of those things where maybe it's cable, maybe it's 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 DVD, but I'm happy that it's in the world. What was your favorite movie growing up as a kid? Well, in this vein, I love Never Ending Story. Mm -hmm. okay. Where the little boy little Caucasian boy flew on the dog, big old dog. And I was like, golly, I want to do that. But, you know, there, Mindy Kaling says, I used to love those films, but they never loved me back. Mm. You know, because she never saw herself in them as right. a brown girl. So now we've solved that. Now, yeah. You're from Compton. Yeah. What is so special about Compton that it breeds so many people that, like, change culture? Like, literally change culture from the Dr. Dre's to the Kendrick Lamar. Like, mm -hmm. what's so special about Compton? Venus and Serena. Venus, Venus and Serena. Serena. Yeah. So many. There's a football player too. Um, I can't remember his name, but um, I don't know. It's a it's 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 a really beautiful place. You know, in California, it's a sprawl, so it's not like here where y'all have y'all call it a town or city, a borough, borough, borough. a borough, mm -hmm. but it's like four blocks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's I mean, in in California, it's everything is so far. So Compton's really big. You know, it connects with Long Beach on one side, Linwood on another side, Watts on another side. So it's surrounded. They call them the mid cities. It's surrounded the hub cities. They call they, they it's like a, 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 a this it's, it's a huge space of blackness mm -hmm. and now brown as well. I think it's something about being kind of landlocked, um, and there being beautiful blocks and blocks that are more traumatic. That something in that mix has made people tap into a creativity. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to do something, folks there are very diligent. Like when you look at Venus and Serena, the diligence to mm -hmm. get up every day, you know. You look at the great MCs that come from there. And Long Beach, too, it's like practicing and trying to be the best at their craft. I mean, Dre, I mean, you know what I mean? The time that it takes. And so I, I don't know what it is about Compton, but I know that there's a, a texture there, a density there that makes people just want to hustle mm -hmm. at whatever it is. Um, I think. Do you feel the energy when you're around other Compton creatives? Like I'm not around though. I, I think we should take a big picture because I don't really. I'm around. I see them separately. Gotcha. Wouldn't it be amazing to like have everyone from oh, there absolutely. in a one day place? In Compton. A day, yeah, right. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. Do people know the reference? You should tell them the reference. But then Harlem, right? Yeah, yeah that great, yeah. that great Hysterical picture. picture. Mm -hmm. I was reading an old LA Weekly article about you from 2012, and you said that uh, often films that are deemed positive, nobody wants to see them. But but you do positive films, so why does your formula work? I don't know if it works. I mean, some have made... made <laughs> you made, mean you don't know if it works? Well, I mean, I think it works in putting out things that matter in the culture, but, you know, it's not like, you know, they, it makes, you know, a trillion dollars. Selma was a modest mm. film. You know, Queen Sugar is on a, a basic cable network. Mm. Um, you know, a Wrinkle in Time, you know, I, you, you don't make that to make it to be a, have a hit. Uh, I really you make enjoy it because Queen Sugar, that's my show. Queen Sugar, it's a yeah. small show. Some people watch it, some people don't. But I just think you have to put out positivity in the world, mm -hmm. um, and people will find it. People who are looking for it. You're doing the Central Park Five story too. Yeah, right? I'm moving to New York. Really? Woo! Okay. For like six months to make yeah Central Park Five. I hope it's in the summer. It is. Okay. I, hell, <laughs> did you think I'll be out here? I can barely handle today. Hey, that's good. Today's bad though. Is, is today bad? Today's bad. Okay, it's a nor'easter, so it, we yeah, don't. No, today I, is not bad. Not so, yet. It no, could yeah, be. Yeah, today will be. It will be, though. But okay. I, Thanks, guys. It's really <laughs> but I am helpful. excited that you're doing that story. I think that's really important for us to talk yeah. about right now because 
I remember when all of that happened and all the propaganda that was put out there, even Donald Trump taking out that uh, huge advertisement. Ad, yeah, that's disgusting. In the paper yeah. about the Central Park Five. What's yeah. been your experience talking to Yeah, I've been working with, working with the brothers for about five, uh, two years now on it and, uh, and researching and getting to know them and writing the script. And, um, and yeah, they're, they're remarkable human beings and their stories should be told. It's not a documentary, it's a narrative, so we're casting now. You gotta cast them as boys, because they were 13, 14, 15 yeah. when it happened, when they were accused and convicted of a crime that they did not commit. Do you remember that as a kid? When I you, do, you do, I remember yeah, it. it. Was huge. You know why I remember it? Because they kept talking about the word wild, wilding. Wilding, wild, and, I, yeah. and I remember, wild. but they called it wilding. Wild, yeah, wilding. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and I remember watching TV and I called my cousin who lived here and I was like, what's wilding? Mm -hmm. And she was like, it ain't no wilding, it's called wildin', wild, right? Yeah. And they got it wrong. And mm -hmm. I remember thinking, golly, they're just like taking our words and 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 Ruining putting them. new yeah, putting new meaning onto them. Cause they they said that wilding meant packs of black kids yeah, remember, who went out yeah. doing it's like, it's just you wilding out. Like, it's not that serious. Mm -hmm. So I remember that so distinctly. And uh so no, all that stuff we explore in the film and casting now and we'll be shooting it here in New York in the summer. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You I'm consider yourself an activist? Activist, uh, I guess so. I mean, I think an activist is just someone who speaks out, right. um, is not afraid to to say what's on their mind. People do that in all kinds of ways, especially now with social. Um, but yeah, I guess so. Do you consider yourself an activist? No, nah, I don't know if I want that title. Why? What is it? Uh, what are the associations I, 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 for you? I think people have a, a certain expectation when you label yourself an activist, and I'm, I may not be at every protest. You yeah, know what I mean? But, I mean, I may not, I may not be familiar with every cause. Like, I, but that's you know, impossible for anyone, even for someone but they who does consider though. themselves like, an activist. They mm -hmm. expect you to be on the front lines of every, do they? of everything. I don't know. I mean, I think of a lot of people that I consider you an activist, um, and I consider a lot of people who aren't necessarily because now there's other ways to protest right. than marching, mm -hmm. right? And I think it's really just about if you have a platform, you lift your voice, mm -hmm. you know. And so, uh, so you all do that. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to re. Sometimes we have to reframe and redefine these words that have become uh, problematic in some ways. Mm -hmm. We take like the them word back. Problematic. Like the word problematic. Yeah. Oh, you guys problematic. don't, pro yeah. you don't like uh, problematic. <laughs> problematic and woke. Oh, I can't and you don't like the word diversity. When people... I don't like the word diversity. I also don't like the word moist. But that's a difference. Moist. moist? <laughs> what is that? Because that's happened? a horrible word. Why? It doesn't even sound good coming out of your mouth. It sounds good like a cake moist? is moist. No, it doesn't. That's the worst I like word. Moist. Oh, oh, why no, no, do you no, hate no. the word <laughs> moist? No, don't say it. Yeah. But why? What oh, it's horrible. <laughs> I don't know. I just what? don't like it. I don't like when people yawn out loud. Mm -hmm. Don't yawn out loud, people. Anyone that hears that my voice. That makes you want to yawn out Don't there, right? yawn out loud like, so that you can hear. Oh, like mm -hmm. That's horrible. No, I have those little habits. Like It's a cameraman. He does that all the time. Time. Not he, him, but it's the guy named Steve. All the time. He, he won't blow his nose. I'm like, yo, why are you saving your snot? You blow your nose. <laughs> yeah, he snorts all the time. Pet peeves. It's uh, serious. Moist nose. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now, now you all interned on the on the, uh, I said intern, but you followed the open the Oprah the OJ trial. I did. Now how was that? I was young. I was like 19 years old. I got this job with CBS News. I thought, oh my gosh, this is it. Like I got this internship with CBS. I'm gonna about to be. I'm about to be a journalist, mm -hmm. for real, for real. They were like, here's your packet. And it was an address to one of the jurors' houses. And they wanted me to sit outside and just like watch who came and went, look at, you know, see what was going on in the trash, the mail, like just see who came there. He was it like an investigator? Uh, I guess, but there were interns from all the networks sitting out front. So they had like all these young people. <laughs> yeah, and we were just mm -hmm. looking at each other like, okay. And um, and yeah, no, that made me not get into journalism because I, I thought I'd be like the black woman, Walter Cronkite. And I was like digging through trash. I was like, I'm cool. <laughs> Pass. You was 19 yeah, yeah. during the riots? Yeah, I Why was... didn't you go out wilding? I didn't wilding. wilding. <laughs> wilding. <laughs> you didn't partake in the riots? Um, those weren't, the trial and the rebellion were not at the same time. Rebellion, I like that uh, word. Oh, words that's, matter. That's what words matter, like yes, word. yes, yes. But you know, I was, I was, I was out and about. You did. <laughs> that's how you got your first camera to shoot your first. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what you got it from. <laughs> now I was listening to Sway Show and yeah. I and I realized you were a rapper, mm -mm. a rapper named Eve. That MC. wasn't even me. That was you. I heard that was, the rap. but that wasn't me. Oh, that wasn't you rapping? No, that wasn't me. Sway said it was you. <laughs> well, I <I'm> assume <laughs> that you okay. were. Obviously, my mic sounds nice, so you were. Salt I loved. I, I love hip hop. Mm. I love it. I love it. My first two films were about hip hop. Two documentaries that nobody saw, but. 
Um, but yeah, no, I I love it, and I want to see that Roxanne Shantae one. I do. I really want to see it too. It looks good. I just met the actress of that uh, out during Oscar week. Somebody introduced me to her, but uh, that's why I was so like stunned when one day I pick up the phone and it was it was Jay Z's voice on the other line saying, "Do you want to do a video?" Because Charlamagne could have attest, and you all can too. Now that I'm here, I'm really a nerd, like big nerd. No, you're not. Yeah, oh, yeah, you did I'm a nerdy. Feud video. I'm nerdy. I'm nerdy. I don't think so. At I all. love it though. I'm I'm just nerdy, right? So nothing wrong with being a nerd. It's actually yeah, it's cool. nothing wrong with it, Charlamagne. I think you're cool as <laughs> that. Okay, I mean, but nerds can be cool too. Mm-hmm. So um, so yeah, that you say was Jay Z cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, my my thought was I don't know if I can make something cool enough for them, right? Because I'm not gonna have like cars or not that he makes that those kind of like <laughs> girls or whatever. But um, uh, but yeah, so so it was really really fun to do it, and he gave me a lot of freedom to do it. But it, it reconnected with me with my love of hip hop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now I'm getting calls from everybody to do videos. To do videos now. Yeah, it's like no, I'm, I make like, movies. I, <laughs> I was one. I think that be my might be my first and last, unless Sade wants to make a video. You still got a lot of connection with hip hop though, because I always say uh, Common should be thanking you every day, because I feel like every award he got <laughs> is because you put him in the position to get the award. Yeah, well, yeah, that's my connection to hip hop too. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. For now, sure. now you also directed Thirteenth, which was critically acclaimed. Mm-hmm. But do you think it changed anything in the actual judicial system? Uh, well, unfortunately, I think it could have, but you know, our our leadership changed, mm. and so almost everything that we talk about in that has backslid about five years. And every year that passes with the current administration, that um, that issue becomes more and more intense. Like it was a moment where things were kind of progressing slowly, um, but that's all been reversed now. So it's it's. I even watched the Thirteenth now, and a lot of towards the end of the film where we're talking about solutions, a lot of that doesn't even exist anymore. You, same you're, way. you're not afraid to speak out ever. Like you ever, you know how they always say, oh, you don't want to offend your, your connects in the industry. Um, I don't know, probably uh, there's some things I, yeah. <laughs> like, like I the other day said, um, I'm not gonna say white people anymore. Because- you colonizers? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to say white people anymore because whenever I see it in a headline, like whenever I see white people say the words white people, it becomes a headline. Ava DuVernay said white people. Uh, uh. Mm. And, it, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it looks negative um, when I'm just talking fact or I'm just talking about whatever. Right. So I decided I'm going to say Caucasian people. Well, your friend mm. over there has another right? term. You want to tell him what you, just, what you call just, him? Oh, no. Colonizer. No, besides no. that. I've, cha- I've evolved it to colonizer. Words matter. Okay, what I was used- it before that? Well, it depends. If you're a racist bigot, I call you a crack-ass cracker, white dog. Oh, gosh. <laughs> if, if you're a racist bigot, I don't just say now, it Ava, don't as a general let's term. Just, let's delineate that these are coming from Charlotte. Yes. <laughs> from Charlotte. <laughs> now, don't I cannot co-sign yes. that. Don't say Ava DuVernay. Yes. But no, just the idea of, you know, of, 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 of white folks or white people. There's something in the words that whenever I see it associated with my name, I think people automatically feel like I'm saying something negative. So mm-hmm. I started saying Caucasian people, it's softer mm-hmm. and it's less <laughs> softer. It's, it's, moist. It's, mo- it's moist. It's moist. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, because I'm just I, I, I talk a lot in terms of white and black and what's mm-hmm. going on in cultural politics and uh and so your point gets obscured by words that are taken right. in the wrong way. But it's crazy now we're in a political atmosphere where even saying white people becomes, you know, something that in the in my industry anyway, people talk about like she's talking about white people. But what, what's the you biggest know? hurdle that Ava DuVernay faces at this point in the industry? Um, I don't know. There's no black woman that I can look at who and say, "Oh, I'll do it like her." Right. You know, because you're you're that person. Um. Yeah. I mean, there's Definitely a lot of black are. women that I look at and say, "Wow, their work is incredible." But, um, you know, n- n- the ones before me haven't been given a chance to make films consistently at a certain with a certain exposure. Mm-hmm. So there's no one to look at and say, I- "I'll do it like that." I can look at some black men and I can look at some white women, but there's not a black woman that I can look at, or even a woman of color that I can look at and say, I'll call her and see how to do this. But what's great is you haven't let that stop you at all. Yeah, trying to figure out, figure it out on my way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, trying to figure it out on my way. So what inspires you? Uh, Young people, really. And I wouldn't have said that before. I don't have kids by choice. I'm not a kid person, never. You don't want kids? No, I never wanted kids. Since I was little, I never wanted kids. My mother said, it'll change. I was like, okay, maybe it'll change. Got older, she's like, when you find the right person, I was like, okay. Found the right person, still don't want kids. Like you just, you just, just 
And that's a big I deal because just... people act like, because I don't have kids yet either, and I'm not saying I'm not going to, but people act like it's such a big deal. Like, oh, why didn't you do this? Why yeah. aren't you married with kids? What's wrong with you? And uh, Yeah, I just, I'm better with kids when they don't live with me. Mm. And you can send them, um, you can send them you can back. back. That's correct. Yeah, that's well, correct. Well, has five if you I need to five. borrow. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. 16, well. 14, 14, 14. You might one. need a couple for taxes. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that tax bracket right now. <laughs> for real. But young people, um, I still love to be around, especially in this film and even in, in, in CP5, you know, those kids, the beginning of the story, they're 13, 14, 15, so I'm looking at a lot of black boys right now for that. And, um, and it definitely... Uh, they inspire me because I look at them and I say, if we can get it right with them, mm -hmm. then by the time, you know, when we're old and we need some taken care of as a country, as a family, as a community, we've got some kids that um, that will understand the legacy that they uphold and understand the things that we need. Mm -hmm. You create empathetic, solid, strong kids now. So, um, so yeah, no, that's what this film is. It's really a love letter to our kids uh, to focus on the things that matter. I thought about this with you and Oprah. I was like, if Oprah and Ava had kids. I read both of y'all didn't want kids. I don't think y'all would be as selfless. I almost mm. feel like the universe needs y'all to wear like all your children. You know right. what I'm saying? Oh, that's kind. <laughs> that's kind. Yeah, I mean, imagine if she had a kid. First of all, that kid. I mean, what if oh. Oprah had a kid? <laughs> oh. It's just like you wouldn't even like that kid. You know, you'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> you'd be like damn, you're Oprah's kid. You know Everything. What I mean? <laughs> like, you know, you'd be so salty with that kid. Um, so, yeah, no, I think there's something about it. Um, for me, anyway, I just know when I come out, come home at night, like, and it's selfish. I just, I just want to be alone. Nice. <laughs> I, I heard, so, I've heard, I've heard you mention yeah. this a couple of times today, because uh, in this LA Weekly article, you said you wanted to change the inability of modern black filmmakers to build careers. Do you still think that's the case, or has it has it changed a little bit? Um, no, a, a little bit maybe for a handful of us, mm -hmm. um, but still not. I mean, look, listen, you look at the. The thousand films were made in the last 11, 11 years, the thousand top grossing films, um, and 92 of those were directed by Caucasian men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that means that just 8% was directed by women, and only four of that 8% by women of color. Wow. So you're talking out of 100, uh, you know, a, 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 a hundred dots on a page, eight of those are women, the rest of them are men. And that's, those are the images that we consume. Everything you see at the movies is from the mind and the heart of a man. Yeah, right. And we know just as, uh, as a community, the yin, yin and yang of, of, of masculine and feminine and the fact that those need to be in balance in order for you to have any kind of harmony in society and life, whatever. So there's such an imbalance in the things that we are consuming and being asked to consume. And when you over-index ind index that with the cultural lens that it's being done through, which is usually not of color, then you really look at there's a serious kind of cinema segregation going on in terms of the very things that we see. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm very much an activist about that, uh, that we need to be really watching what our kids consume and who it comes from and how. And so it's a beautiful thing right now where actually you can turn on TV on any given night and have more than one choice, right. mm -hmm. you know, of things to see. Um, you know, that there's movies and there's music and there's literature and there's painting and there's photography and there's all these things happening right now. I think it feels like a bit of a renaissance, mm -hmm. but you know it's happened before and it's gone away before, so we so have to we, preserve it. Are we celebrating prematurely? Or we should we should applaud ourselves. Uh, I think um, I, I don't think we should celebrate. I think we should acknowledge a, a, a celebratory moment, but work to make it that. Got you. In reality, you right? Act like, well, the work's done. Yeah, you exactly. Have to keep going. There's so much more to do. And even just behind the scenes, with everything that we've been seeing exposed about what Hollywood is like behind the scenes, a large part of that is not having enough women in power, in positions of power, where people feel like, okay, now I have somebody else I can go to if this doesn't work out with this Caucasian male director. Ah, uh, see? It sounds better. <laughs> see? <laughs> Listen to me. I'm telling you. Or producer, <laughs> at least I know I have other options. A lot of people felt really stuck in situations where they couldn't really speak out for women right. about things that were going on with them behind the scenes, but just not having other women that we could turn to and, and forge our own alliances. Yeah, no, I think so. There's some there's some amazing women. Oh, I just saw you over there. The face peeking Don't be out. afraid. Yeah. <laughs> He's a human being. But, but, but for you all as men, when you hear talk about women, 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 International Women's Day is tomorrow and women in power, like, does it just sound like Charlie Brown's mom to you? Like, wah, wah, wah? Like, are you really, do you understand it? Do you Not for those of us it? with wives and daughters. No, I understand but, it. Like you, you know said, I mean? got it's... three daughters and a wife, so you, you want to push it even more. Yeah? You know? Yeah, absolutely. You want to encourage and support even more, you know? 
Yeah. That's why you have to be. daughters. Cause yeah, maybe because it's fathers of daughters we look more, right? That's why you have to be like you, with the Time's Up and Me Too movement. You know eventually it's going to make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. For your, your, your little girls. I mean, little that's girl. at least how I, I take it. Yeah, yeah. For sure. For sure. I hear that. Well, we, we thank you for coming. She has to go, guys. She, yeah. she got things to She's do. She's very busy. Every good time I, I got comes one out. question, because you told me once that a side of the core was your passion project. Yes. Are you getting any closer to getting that I, done? I really want to do that. No, because Central Park 5 was my current passion, but that's something that I really want to turn my attention to eventually. Um, I first have to get her permission and connect with her. And even if it's not me directing it, I want to support that film being made. Do you know the story? Yeah. I mean, her life is incredible, and it's, it would be an, an incredible film. Um, is that legal? Can you talk to her? Because she's a <laughs> quote unquote so called fugitive. <laughs> Don't, she's not a fugitive. She's not. I thought she was. I thought no. she was cool. Yeah, I thought she was a fugitive she's in Jersey. Cool. I think Jersey? they still got warrants for her in Jersey. That's what I thought. I don't know. Uh, they call her a fugitive. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think she's a fugitive. Right, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what's yeah. the word for that? What's What's her word for? No, what's the word? What's our word? Yeah. I don't know, freedom fighter, freedom revolutionary, fighter. Exactly. Freedom uh, freedom fighter. mother yeah. of the revolution. There you go. Um, so heck yeah, we can talk to her. And people have. I just need to make the pilgrimage and, you know, see what she wants. And and uh, and thank you for reminding me because I definitely want to do that. All right. Yeah. Let's put it into the universe. I feel like I haven't been hip hop enough, cool enough. Um, you I are I you. I feel like Stop. I haven't been fun enough, Stop. controversial enough. No. All right. Well, I, want, I wanted you guys to say something crazy to me. We can start something now. Out. <laughs> right, I just dropped. We want you to rap no, right now. No. Thank you and goodbye, everybody. <laughs> I had a good time with you. You sure you want something controversial? No, I don't. You sure you want something to She's kidding, guys. Just kidding. She's kidding. Bye. Bye, folks. Rick and Tom out this Friday. Rick and Tom, take your children. This yes. Friday, go check it out. A Wrinkle in Time. Yeah. Thank you, Ava DuVernay. Thanks. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning.